Now I will, uh, I am uh, giving you another uh, interesting case which you would realize. You should try to uh, keep in mind few other things. This is a child who came to us in the casualty, 12 years old female, has been having fever for about 3 weeks. Child came to us, at that time the child was having alteration in sensorium and there was a history of seizures. The child came to us, there is no, uh, we uh, saw the child, there is no history of, this This was basically the complaints. Now when the child came to us on examination, this child was in altered state of mind. There is a, there, there was uh, asking uh, the, not only before the examination, I have uh, asked about the history. One important history was history of an ear discharge. False swelling on the, from the left ear. You can, uh, still they have put a cotton there. And uh, that's all. Now, having said that, anybody would see that the child has got, this could be a case of a meningitis. So, fever, 12 years old child, fever for over 2 to 3 weeks. Further asking the history, there was no family history of any tuberculosis. So, because a long history, the child has not been, the child had been treated by the private doctors, but it was only the oral medicines which had been given. No injectables had been given. So, with, with all these complaints, this child had come to the casualty. When we did the examination, which I can, uh, this child had signs of meningeal irritation. Child was in altered state of mind. The tone and power of the limbs was normal. No neurological deficit was found. You know, having said, there were meningeal signs. As I said, history was there. Meningeal signs were there, so this child was treated for biogenic meningitis. But before tre being treatment, we did the LP. LP of this child had the low sugars. That was, I think, if I remember, this child has about 30 sugar, 30 milligram per deciliter. Protein was, I think, more than 100. Cells, of course, had polys and lymphos. So, 80% polys, 20% lymphos with 20% lymphos. So, this could be an early case of a, even in pyogenic meningitis, you can have a polymorphonuclear as well as lymphocytic response. The child was accordingly put on the antipyogenic line. That is, we start, we gave to this child monosep and mycomycin. Now, you are seeing this child after about 3 weeks. Child would not improve. Child in between used to cry for the headaches. Child will say, I am having severe headache. It was mainly the frontal headache and maybe it used to be an early morning headache. Now, if I ask you a question now to my students or my postgraduates, early morning headache, Harsh, what could be the cause of early morning headache? Very good. So, you, you, have, you have rightly said, a child with increased intracranial tension, the cause could be many. It could be meningitis, it could be even tumors, any meningitis, any tumors, anything, any bleeding, history of a stroke. So, all those things, even a child, we don't uh, recognize a stroke, but a child can come with a stroke also and with raised tension. So, there will be early morning headache. So, that is very common. So, this child used to cry in between of, for with the headache. Child was being treated. So, what we did, after about 3 or 4 days, as, as the dictum is, the child is not improving, fever was still persisting, we did a repeat LP. Because child is not improving and we sent the CSF for the culture also. In between, we got the CT of the chest, or CT of the cranium also done and CT cranium was normal. LP findings were almost the same. Polys were about 20%, 80% were the lymphocytes. Sugar at this time, at this time was almost okay. Sugar was, I would say, because it has to be two-third of the blood sugar, so it was about 60, keeping in mind about 90, 80, 90 or 100 blood sugar. So, the proteins were almost the same. Child was, child is rather worsening. 
worsening in the form, continuously having headache. Sensorium. Now what you are seeing, the child is child sensorium is much better. But at that time, the child sensorium was altered, and in between, the child was also showing the attack of a seizure. Anything else you would like to keep now, Vaishnavi? You would like to say anything? A child has not improved. You have put the patient on pyogenic lines. CSF after four or five days, you have given a broad spectrum monocep encomycin. Child is not improved. So anything you would like to keep in mind, or you would like to review your case further. Sangeeta can say. Very good. Viral, you see, oh, yes, anything can be there. So, what I am trying to assess is viral, you, of course, you will not have a, that much of a long history, but still, as you rightly said at the first instance, it could be a tubercular meningitis. There may not be history. CT may be normal. We have seen few cases where CT is normal, and sometimes it is picked up on MRI. Well, we could not get the MRI in this child done, but empirically, since the child was not improving, I am just trying to say. This child was even put on anti-tubercular therapy. In view of non-improvement, polymorphonuclear leukocytosis, only on that basis, the child was put on anti-tubercular therapy. Along with it, steroids. Child had shown some improvement, but child will still not. I well, we don't expect also the improvement to occur that fast, but thus we also gave the decongestives. So, as we started on initially as we do it in tubercular meningitis, we started on many tall for first 48 hours. Child, uh, of course, partly improved, but child was not, sensorium was all still altered. Well, at that point of time, when we, the child is not improving even with tubercular meningitis, so what should we do? We did a third time we did an LP. Well, anybody can say why we did a LP. Here at that time, when I was anything important in the history, I would like to mention here and ask you, the house, there was a very typical history in this girl that this child has been playing with the cattle. And child used to take bath also with the, in the, with the cattle. She used to enjoy, she used to, buffaloes or cow, the cows, she used to sprinkle water on them and she used to uh, get herself also washed with those with that water so that was a good history which we got having said that if you have that kind of a history available anything one year would you like to keep in mind why i mean pressing on this history which led on led us on to believe you may not get a history always but in this child that history was there so we just thought of if that history is there of playing or playing water and playing with the cat in their pond, they are, she is washed, she is, so it's something called a zoonotic disease. So it could be a zoonotic disease. But this child had evidence of meningeal signs which are still there. I'll just uh, try to elicit the meningeal signs. The, <coughs> the child's, take one better. The child still has got, see the, there is still neck stiffness. Child is not able to move that well. Neck stiffness is still there. Kernic sign is also there. There is tightness. It is not there. So the kernic is also there. Neck stiffness is also there. Now I ask you, there is a history of headache. Also in this child, there was a history of vomiting. And there was history. So when we examined at that time, I forgot to mention, this child had bradycardia. So this was typically a case of it with the raised tension. And I did mention earlier, that there was an early morning headache also. Right. Now, if I want to, Pratik can come, and uh, if I want to find out whether this child is having sign, any sign which you would like to elicit for finding out any increased intracranial tension is there or not there. You come here and examine. And show me that how, what test you would like to do, what sign you would like to elicit to rule out intracranial tension. In a 12 year old child. Sir, I would like to take the PP. Sorry? BP. BP, I, I give you BP of this child is normal. Yes. Any sign you would like to elicit? 
Fundus examination. Yes. Very good. So, fundus examination, part of the examination, that is not a sign. Yes. Fundus examination of this child was normal. Yes. Any sign which you would like to elicit, Tanu can say that anything, uh, a 12 year old child, yes. to find out whether this child is having any range in the clean tension or not, because I want to highlight that to my residents, because that is a sign which you people forget and you people don't do it. Maybe Tanu can do an elicit here. What sign you would like to elicit in a child of raised tension? 12 years old child, history is there. Any sign you would like to elicit? You can sit there and can ask me. If you know, then you can come and de demonstrate. Sir, percussion of the skull. Percussion of the skull. Okay, do the percussion of the skull. That is called McEwen sign. So, okay. The sign name is McEwen sign and that you, there you do the percussion of the skull. So, let her, let me see what... Uh, कि आपने पे हाथ कहां पे रखा है नेक के नीचे ये मैंने इनको बताया हुआ है इसलिए अच्छी बात है कि नेक के नीचे रखना है दैट इज व्हाट आई वांटेड टू हाईलाइट शी राइटली सेड व्हाट पीपल डू इज व्हेन यू आर डूइंग द मैकीवन साइन आप हाथ यहां रख देते हो और हाथ यहां सिर के भी रख देते हो ताकि सिर को सपोर्ट मिल जाए एंड देन यू स्टार्ट डूइंग दिस नाउ इट इज कॉल्ड द अदर थिंग इज अ क्रैक पॉट साइन अगर वो पॉट इज ऑलरेडी क्रैक्ड एंड यू हैव पुट अ हैंड हियर so, where will the crackness? Crackness will not occur. So, you always have to keep the your hand in the neck area. And then, you have to do this. Abhi isko crack pot nahi raha. Maybe I'm not yet, it's okay. But that is how you have elicited the crack pot sign, which is called the McEwen sign. So, you never, don't try to do it in the exam, that you put your hand on the skull. Because if crack is there and you have supported it with your hand, then there will not be any crack. So you listen to the crack pot sign. Like the crack is broken and broken. So that kind of a sign, sound is produced. Here there is no sound, even if I put the hand on the neck. So that is what is done. So this child, now we are coming back to the case. This was for the elicitation of few signs in this child. Now coming back to the case, we have done, we have given to this child, anti bugler we had initially given anti pyogenic so it was a mixture of the two which we had been giving now i said last time when i left that we did a third time in lp having got that history of playing with the in the same pond the she is taking bath so ultimately we sent a fresh sample to the microbiology department now whatever facilities are available with us Suddenly, after some time, I got a call from the microbiologist that, Sir, this is a canthamoeba lag raha hai. So, this is a case of a parasitic meningitis. And you have two things that you need to do, nigleria and a canthamoeba. So, some, I have seen earlier only very rare, two cases much before in my earlier years of my career. The children can come to us not improving, and if you elicit it, because that is why I always say you have a good history. If you take a good history, here lucky, luckily we could get a history. So, this was a parasitic meningitis. So, in a parasitic meningitis, luckily we have saved this child. Otherwise, Acanthamoeba meningoencephalitis, the other name is primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. That's called PAM, primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Now, this is all... Now, this is only suggestive. You score and go trophozoites mele, fresh sample me. In my microbiology, they phoned us. Haan, we don't have that facility, but you must know that you could send the sample in some labs, research lab for the PCR investigation. If you can do the PCR for a canthamoeba, that will confirm the diagnosis. But he, we don't have that facility for the PCR. This child lately... Then we read also because we had treated long, long back and th there are no consensus for the treatment. Multi, multiple therapies have been used. People have used amphotericin B intrathecally as well as intravenously. Miltefosin has been used, rifampicin has been used, steroids have been used and even fluconazole has been used. 
we put this patient because we were very we had already started this child on rifampicin because I told you that this child was only on all, already on anti tubercular so we continued on with the rifampicin having said that rifampicin we continued we put this patient on amphotericin B and along with it we put this patient on azithromycin because in some of the literature it was mentioned that azithromycin can also be given and luckily for us this child is saved otherwise if you read the literature the mortality for such disease is about more than 60 70 percent and in spite of all so i i wanted to highlight this case to you that at times when the child is not improving it is not always biogenic and tubercular you must keep in mind viral if the disease is short or shorter duration if it is longer you must keep in mind parasitic infections and parasitic infection then you those histories are important right so that is all i wanted to say or I, she has done it rightly. Aapko kaise raise tension mein karna hai, mein ki even sign, ho pata hona chahiye. Manager irritation ke signs pata hone chahiye. That's all. Thank you very much.